Hi guys, today we're gonna to talk about what I think is one of the most underrated companies in the tech space, maybe the most underrated company in the tech sector, and that is Hollyland. I'm not kidding about that. I love Hollyland, and they sent over the Lark M1. Now this is an entire wireless lavalier system here in this little iPod looking charging case. Look at this. This is the transmitter. Look at the size of this thing. I am blown away. Let's talk about it. So anyone who's watched my channel is probably a huge fan of my channel, but they also know that I have recommended the Hollyland Lark 150 more than any other wireless microphone in the world, and that is because it has this fantastic charging case, and it's got these tiny little transmitters, and you can plug in lavalier mics to it, and uh, it is such a great design that uh, DJI, I think, borrowed heavily in uh, their new wireless mic design because it is very reminiscent of the Hollyland Lark 150, and so it should be. This is how all mics should be going forward. Come in a little charging case, just pull them out, and uh, they are connected, ready to go. Well, uh, Hollyland decided to uh, do a new version, and this one I think is very good for the content creator. There are a lot of cameras out right now for the content creator. The little ZV-E10, which I feature heavily on this channel, the Nikon Z30, Z30, uh, the Canon R7 or the Canon R10, and uh, it just companies know that uh, content creation, the vlogosphere, is where it's at, and I don't think you can find a better microphone when it comes to running and gunning, as the kids say, with a wireless lab than this guy right here. And I'm gonna tell you, right away, the price. It retails for $150. They launched it for $150. They actually launched it last week. I was supposed to review it last week, but I had a cold and I lost my voice because my children, my children gave me a cold, getting in the way of my YouTube dreams. It's, it's hard to review a mic when you don't have a voice. It's $150, so you get two transmitters, so you could have, you know, interviews, you could have two people run around talking their nonsense and going straight into the camera, and uh, that is 150 bucks. That is a very good deal, but if you are watching this on uh, July 13th when I'm launching the video, it is still Prime Day in a lot of places, and they knocked the price of this brand new thing down for Prime Day to $114. So I'm just gonna say, stop the video. If you're a content creator, go buy this thing, then come back to the video through my affiliate links, of course, because I, I have to get stinking rich. But now that you've purchased it, let's talk about the features a little bit. It comes in this very handsome case, so that is it. That houses everything that you need. You throw that in your camera bag, and of course, it has the little charging case, and you pull these guys out, and uh, by the way, they are now connected. Let's see, here you go. You got, I'm looking at, you got two blue, and two green over here, that means it is connected. Now, if you click these yellow buttons here on the side, it goes into noise canceling mode. Did I click them? There we go. Noise canceling mode, green and green. Now, so uh, that is not a mode that I will use. I will get into that, but that's it. They're connected. And if you put one of them back in the case, it will go into mono mode just automatically. And uh, that is how I use it because nobody ever wants to hang out with me. By the way, the charge lasts eight hours. You have eight hours of record time on both the transmitter and the receiver, and it takes an hour and a half to charge. So after eight full hours of use, charge it for an hour and a half. You can charge it two times in the case before you have to plug in the USB to charge the case. So that's 20 hours of runtime with stopping every eight hours to charge for an hour and a half. And that is just, I've never seen that on a wireless system. And so here is that USB cord that comes in the case and it has a uh, connector here for your mirrorless camera. And if you wanna run it through a phone or a tablet, it has a connector for that as well. It has these adorable little wind muffs which connect very easily on to uh, the little transmitter there. So he looks like Don King or maybe one of those uh, British guards. 
And also I should mention the other buttons, of course. That one is the noise canceling one. And this button here on the transmitter is just to power it off. If you don't wanna put it back in the case and you wanna save the battery, you power it off. I dropped it, but I caught it. It's so light, it's so light, I caught it so easily. And it has a power off button here. It also has a volume button where you can uh, change it between low, medium, and high. It's not a huge jump, and I do wish it had markings for that, but when you pull it out of the case, it's on the medium setting, and that is where I leave it, so I don't worry about ever changing that button. Oh, also the transmitters and the receiver also have a USB port on them, so you don't even have to take the case. You could just take this, and a USB-C cord, and that's it. That's your entire setup. This tiny little thing with a USB cord, if you wanted, you know, you could put that in, in a pants pocket and you wouldn't even know the difference. So uh, now personally, I will always take around the little charging case because it's adorable and it's tiny and why not? Although I believe you can buy one transmitter and the receiver without the charging case. So you would just have a USB cord with that. Now, personally, I would get the entire bundle because it is worth it and it only costs a little bit more. And especially if you're doing this on Prime Day. So just, just get the whole set, the charging case. You will not regret that. So if you're close enough to your camera, you turn your back or objects come between you and your camera, you're not going to get dropouts. It's great that way. If you stay in line of sight, you can actually get 600 and 56 feet, so that is plenty. I don't know where you're going that far from your camera, but you shouldn't because somebody will definitely take it. But that 656 feet, that is all you're ever gonna need. So enough of my blathering on, let's go out into the field where you will use this thing for a sound test. Okay, so now I'm testing out the extremely convenient M1 from Hollyland. My voice is still not quite back to normal, but I just sound more like a jazz singer, even, even more alluring to you, the YouTube audience, but you can still gauge how great of a sound is coming from this microphone, listening to my dosset tones. Isn't that fantastic? And I have used this microphone a ton since I've received it because I was testing out different lenses, swapping them out, and I wanted something light and easy, something that wouldn't affect me balancing one of my gimbals. So I've been taking this around a lot, and that way I also don't have to plug the lav mic in, attach that, and then attach the uh, little receiver there to my belt, I'm sorry, the transmitter to my belt. So this is uh, just so convenient for very quick vlogging setups. And all you see is that little bit of chest hair right there, which makes me look more like a man. Now, if you're in an environment that doesn't have any wind, if you're out in the real world, always get a wind muff either on the lav mic or on uh, this little transmitter right here. But uh, if you are somewhere where there is not any wind, you can just pop this off and look how discreet this is. I mean, look at that right there. I don't know if the wind is affecting it yet, but if I was like wearing a collared shirt with buttons, you know, like a real adult man, you could hide this so easily in something like that. So convenient, but here comes the wind. Let's see if I can get some wind noise here and why you need a wind muff. I just put this up back on. Wow, I was able to do that one-handed. And now you're not going to hear any wind noise no matter where I turn, into the wind or not. This thing is, it's so fantastic. If you don't mind this sticking up, there's a little bit like that, just clips to the collar shirt. A lot of times, like with the Rode microphones or the, any, any of them where you're not taking a, a lapel mic and plugging it in to the transmitter, then, you know, they're always too bulky to put on a collar. I'm wearing V-necks. I don't want, you know, to have this pulled all the way down and have a nip slip. So I uh, was never able to do it before, no matter how light the little transmitter is. But this thing is so small and so light, I can clip it to my V-neck and it still, it still stays up. So I am absolutely loving this and it has fit into my daily rotation. So there you go, even though I only had half a voice, let's be honest, that's better than most people's full voices. You could tell how good the sound quality is coming out of that guy right there. Now, I did mention that I won't be using the noise canceling and I will show you now in this video why I would not use the noise canceling function on the uh, Lark M1. Now, I've got the noise canceling mode on here to see if I can get it to cut out like it has in some other tests that I've been doing. What, did it happen? 
let's see, I'll, I'll check it out in post if it happened, but it is one of the reasons that I would not use the noise canceling function that is in this microphone. Now I will test it in a very noisy environment uh, because you, sometimes you may have no choice. Maybe it's gonna drop your audio slightly or make it a bit weird, but at least people will be able to hear you when there's a ton of background noise. So let's check that out now. Now because it's Toronto, there's no real shortage of noise. So I'm sitting here by a busy street. This is the regular mode. And uh, this is how the mic would sound with traffic behind me. Now I'm gonna switch it. Okay, so it's quite a bit of noise going on now. It's actually louder than it was before. There's a motorcycle blaring in the background. So I imagine the mic is doing a decent job of cutting out all of that traffic noise. But I do find that it also kind of computerizes my own voice and sometimes there are dropouts. I might use this noise canceling in an extreme environment like this or a really noisy place, but for the most part, I am uh, going to leave the noise canceling function off. In fact, I probably will never use it. So now while it did definitely cut down the ambient noise a lot, it was much easier to hear me. I didn't love the sound quality and there were dropouts. Now, if you're somewhere where you just have no choice and you're not going to do noise reduction in post, then this might work for you. Personally, I am not gonna use that feature. And since we're here, let's talk about the things that I would like to see improved in this guy. Uh, number one would be the ability to plug in a lavalier because it just, I know this is for your vlogging type setups, but it would be great. I, I would use this for my everything if I could be uh, able to plug a lavalier into it. If you're at a wedding and the groom, you know, people don't mind plugging a little lav into their collar or if you're doing a documentary, the talent are used to seeing a little lav plugged in, it's very discreet. You don't wanna plug something like that into somebody's collar. I mean, you can, it's still not bad. Like, check it out. Like, like that's still, it's not bad, but in, in a more professional environment, people are gonna expect a lavalier. And so I will be taking the Lark 150 when I'm doing my more pro things, when I'm doing my interviews, documentaries, stuff like that. I would also like to see switches instead of buttons, like right here, the button for the noise canceling. Did I do it? Yeah, see, I just pressed the button and I turned on noise canceling, which I don't want to do, so I'll turn that off. But uh, it would be nice if that, that was a switch so that I would know I'm not in noise canceling mode because if I just touch my shirt and I don't look down, then maybe I am. And the volume's the same thing. I don't know if I'm in uh, low, medium, or high, so uh, I would like to see a switch on that as well. Now, in a perfect world, I would also like to see internal recording, but I understand in something this small, you're probably not gonna get internal recording. Plus, if you want a backup recording, you should probably use a separate audio recorder, maybe a boom mic, something like that, because even with internal backup recording, if the talent is like hitting the microphone, then, uh, then it's gonna be screwed up no matter what. Better to have a separate backup, but still, if I could get internal recording, I would love it. But that's it, those are just the improvements I would like to see on an already fantastic product because I really, I didn't think I would clip it to my shirt and, and want to go because every other iteration of a lavalier system, the, it's been too big, the Rode Wireless Go, or even the Hollyland uh, Lark 150, as tiny as this thing is, this big square, not a big square, this little square would still drag my collar down eventually. But this thing, look at this, even my uh, sultry V-necks that I like to wear, look, it's, it's not dipping it down. Just let me show you, if I put on the, the Hollyland receiver, the Lark 150, I should say, look at this. See, it's already it just ducked down in my shirt and it's a matter of time before it flops down and I look like Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. That's not something that a distinguished gentleman of my stature should have. So I was never a fan of putting these types of things on my collar, but now that I have something so small and light, I have been using the crap out of this thing because like I'm reviewing cameras and lenses and I'm swapping out lenses and changing cameras and I just grab this thing and I go and it's so tiny. Let me just show you on my ZV-E10. Look at that there on the ZV-E10. It's just the biggest part is this tiny little cord, which I also think is cool because it has a little, you know, coil there to keep the mess of wires out of the way. So that's great for balancing on gimbals because it's so small and so light and it's so low that it doesn't hit the back of gimbals when you're using it. And uh, just look at that. For your vlogging people, your content creators, it's just, you, you can't get any better. So once again, thanks to Hollyland for sending this guy out. I use it every single day and I will continue to use this 
every single day. So uh, if you're a content creator like myself, uh, do yourself a favor and go get one of those. Uh, leave a comment, ask a question about it. If you if you got one, I'll be sure to answer it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Now, if you don't mind, to drink a little Neo Citron here and uh, make myself all better. Although I kind of wish this voice would stay. I feel like starting a blues bar. <laughs>